A pleasant good evening and welcome to Sat TV's Channel 9 Evening News. I'm your presenter, Larry Rock. Thank you for joining us. Among the major developments, former Rose Valley MP says roads are being neglected. Jamaican banker paid 8 million in tainted gifts. Dalai Lama gives 1.1 million Templeton prize money to charity. West Indies suffered a 10 wicket defeat. Details of these and other stories after the break. Thank you for staying with us. Now for the details of the news. Green Mountain Flowers, the place where fresh cut flowers, foliage, indoor and garden plants are produced, hosted the annual Mother's Day Flower Festival at the Old Market on Sunday, May 13th. There were a variety of beautiful plants on display suiting each mother present. Okay, well, this is a Mother's Day plant and flower fair is an annual event that we have been having for the past eight years. And when we first started, we first started just across the road at the fisheries complex. And from there, we found that we were expanding, more people were coming, so we moved into the Rosa Market. So far, the Rosa Market has been doing very well for us. We have been able to kind of decorate the place to suit our fancies. But now we're getting a feeling that, you know, the Rosa Market, although it works, but if the Rosa Market doesn't develop itself, we may not be able to develop the Rosa Market and we may have to move the project as location. Manager Mr. Darrell Phillips says every year the organization puts on a display of flowers and plants and it is always a pleasure to do so. Mr. Phillips says in comparison to last year's flower festival, more flowers were sold. In addition, he stated that he understands that people may not be able to purchase as many flowers as they would in the past. Therefore, he was pleased to be satisfied with the end result. Oh, well, um, Green Mountain Flowers are known for their flowering plants, the um, home and garden plants. And we had roses, we have about eight different varieties of ferns, we have about ten different varieties of bromeliades, which were very new to us this year. People really seem to like it, and they last a long time. Here we have some syngoniums, and we are we're cut off having syngoniums, but those nice white syngoniums that can do very well in those, this is the first time we are having them, and people are catching up to it. I am satisfied with the tuna. Well, like every other organizer, you always think that things would be better. And Volunteer Mr. Eagle Oversani says he has been in the plant industry over 10 years and he feels obligated to give advice to Mr. Philip and his co-workers. In the garden center in Israel, near Tel Aviv, for 30 years. So I'm very experienced. I had also a caller on television speaking about plants. So I know a lot about plants. We decided, my wife and me, to retire to Dominica. So we found only one nursery that is professional, that is accepting advices. They don't think that they don't think that he knows everything. Miss Osani believes it is not an easy task to take care of the flowers and do a good job at it. Every Mother's Day, when I come here, I see more and more sales. People begin to adopt an attitude of loving plants, of loving flowers, which is very nice. This is a very nice culture of loving flowers instead of spoiling the nature. You love the nature, you love flowers, and you bring some nature at home. So that's, my, that's what I do to Dominica, my part of helping Dominican people. In more Mother's Day celebrations, the Rosso Improvement Committee invited mothers from the Rosso District to a Mother's Day luncheon at the Alias Francis. Mothers gathered for a lovely meal which was organized by the Parliamentary Representative of Rosso, Honorable Norris Prevo. Mr. Prevo says the main reason for this annual event is to entertain the mothers who do not have anyone to spend Mother's Day with and can't afford to celebrate the occasion. Today, Mother's Day 2012, first of all, I want to wish all our mothers a very, very happy Mother's Day, especially our mothers of the greater Rosa community. Every year for the past 12 years or more, on Mother's Day, we gather here as a community to break bread. We have a lunch, 
our men do the work, our hotels assist us to prepare the food, our men fix up the hall, serve the food, clean up the place, serve the mothers, and the mothers relax and not just share a meal. He believes that it is important that mothers feel appreciated and this is what he tries to do every year through this luncheon. A number of men volunteered to serve the mothers and make them feel as comfortable as possible. Mr. Prevost says that he was amazed at the turnout because last year fewer men showed up. And committee, this is one of the greatest events every year. Our mothers coming together, relaxing and breaking bread together as a family. I am very excited this year by the number of our men who have come out to assist. Some years we have less, but this year we really have a very strong turnout of our men who have come to assist us with serving this lunch. I mean, and so the work is easier. We've got men from Roseau Central, men from Greater Roseau, as well as we have one vol two volunteers here from Australia who are here with the Red Cross and we also have a medical doctor and his wife who are volunteering in Dominica here with the Princess Margaret Hospital. Mr. Privo says every day should be Mother's Day and a young man of this generation in particular needs to be aware of this. Volunteer Mr. Jeff Bernard says Mother's Day comes once a year and is privileged to be a part of this event. Mr. Bernard is originally from Australia and he says so far he's fascinated by Dominica's features. Yeah, uh, we are having an event for all of the mothers for Mother's Day. We are just giving them lunch as a treat. How, how do you find it so far? It's gone really well. Everyone's really nice and friendly. What's your favorite part about this event? I know, getting free food. Okay, you're a volunteer, right? Uh, my dad is. He works with the Red Cross in Dominica and we're living here for a year. Opposition leader Mr. Edison James says more markets are needed to export bananas from Dominica. Mr. James stated this will be in the effort of reviving Dominica's banana industry so we can produce 50,000 tons of bananas for you. He said just like we have done it before, both regional and international markets, there is potential to have it done again. It is a matter of getting a structured, organized program involved in production uh, processing and marketing. As I talk to the institutions that are at the forefront of engagement in um, agricultural production and banana production, I'm satisfied that we are able to do this. Mr. James pointed out that when the United Workers Party administration left office, they had made negotiations for Windward Islands Banana Action Program which a substantial amount of money from the European Union was made available. He said that these funds were for the sole purpose of the recapitalization of the industry. And so we've articulated a position on this, that we uh, will engage in a banana um, rehab restructuring program involving the provision of the appropriate inputs to the growers, as it's a recapitalization of the, the, the farmers' programs contract farming, you know, um, to generate and to be somewhere in you know, 50,000 tons and even going forward, bringing in appropriate technology into the industry, recognizing that uh, something different has to be done to attract young people into farming, including um, banana production. That is all part of the, of the process. Mr. James also stated in order to ensure the survival of the agricultural industry, young persons must be brought in and taught the trade so the skills can be passed on to them. Because we've heard all this talk about young people that's interested in agriculture. And so if we continue with this negative, then we will get what we see, see, seem to be talking, talking about. The truth is that the government pays lip service to agriculture because it thinks it's desirable to see something to, to make people feel that it's doing something, uh, but there's no structured, organized approach to increasing production and productivity in the agricultural sector, particularly in bananas. They will tell you that they will give $2 million for feeder roads, um, $2 million will give you, uh, it will not even take you out of the villages. 
He pointed out that marketing, financing, and guidance are the essential factors which need to be addressed. He went on to say that the United Workers Party is very committed to ensuring the survival of Dominica's agricultural sector and making young people get involved. Officials from the European Union, EU, and the Caribbean Forum African Caribbean Pacific States, Cari Forum, came together at the Fortium Hotel on May 11th for a joint dialogue between the two bodies. The Ministry of Employment, Trade and Industry, Diaspora Affairs, hosted a Cari Forum EU dialogue at the level of senior officials. At the current chair of the Cari Forum, the Acting Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Employment, Trade, Industry and Diaspora Affairs, let the carry from you dialogue at the level of senior officials. We are therefore particularly pleased to have this opportunity to explore further common priorities and shared agendas with the EU, recognizing the EU as a long-standing partner in our development thrust. This senior officials dialogue offers us, offers, offers us a wonderful opportunity to concretize the Forum EU areas of cooperation in areas such as, as development and trade, regional integration, investment, development po policies, and approach to budget support, among others. Some of the items which were discussed include Caribbean EU strategy, regional integration, development and trade cooperation, political and economical situation in both regions. The Cari Forum is a group of 16 Caribbean states which was established formally in 1992 to facilitate economic dialogue with the EU. The objective of the dialogue was to exchange information, foster mutual and better understanding, and define common priorities and shared agendas. It covers issues of mutual interest and concern on a global and regional and sub-regional levels. Like the European Union, the recent global financial and economic crisis severely impacted Cariforum states. Our fragile, vulnerable, and less resilient economies are still struggling with the effect of this crisis. It's against this background that we meet to dialogue with our European partners. The agenda for our dialogue is an extensive one. It includes discussion on the framework of our political relations. In that context, we will review development in both regions, as well as the joint Cari Forum EU strategy, which will set the basis for our future cooperation. The EU team was led by Mr. Christian Leffer, Managing Director of the Americas of the European External Action Service, EEAS, and included the head of the EU delegations in the Caribbean, and other senior and high-level EEAS and European Union Commission officials. Over the recent years, our relationship has been evolving from a few nation classic, old-style, post-independence relationship based essentially on development cooperation and preferential trade arrangements to a far more mature relationship and a much more multifaceted relationship between equal partners who choose to work together on a whole range of issues in the political, economic, social, commercial, and of course developmental areas. Dialogue at this level comprises an exchange of views and does not involve making political agreements, undertaking specific binding commitments or issuing bilateral agreements, statements, and declarations. Students of the Dominica Community High School were excited to have accomplished the finishing point of secondary school education. The school leaving ceremony was held under the theme, Look Up As It Is A New Day, on Friday, May 11th, where the students and teachers celebrated their graduate success. An award in general prizes, subject prizes, subject awards were presented to the students, as well as performances from different classes and clubs within the school. Principal of the Dominica Community High School, Mrs. Celia Nicholas, was speechless, yet proud to witness the students' achievements. The Mon Prosper situation is a very serious one. The government started the rehabilitation of the road in 2010, where they promised to do half 
the first section of the road leading to Mount Prosper. And you know it's two years now, they can complete that now. These were the words of former parliamentary representative for the Rosa Valley, Mr. Norris Charles, in his plea to the government to see the completion of the Rosa Valley Road project. He mentioned that since 2010, there has been intermittent work on the first section of the road, which is unsatisfactory, especially as we are now in 2012 and it has not been completed. Now the other half, the other section from where they are doing the rehabilitation to the village, I mean, this is the more mountainous part of the Mount Prosper Road. You have another lot of hills, and then you have Port Woods right you know, at the top of those hills, in the center of the hill. And then the people of Montreal have been calling. We've had, we've called on the ministers, we've called on the parliamentary representative. And, you know, they are not, they are really ignoring the people of Mount Prosper. Mr. Charles says that Mount Prosper is known as the vegetable basket of Dominica, and there is a serious water problem which is hindering production. He said again in a quest to have the issue resolved, they have contacted the parliamentary representative and also the government, but their concerns are falling on deaf ears. In one prospect, again, when United Booker's party was in office, we started the playing field in 1999. And when the hurricane came in November, you know, the equipment moved out. And up to this day, the government cannot complete the playing field for the people of Mount Prosper. So the people of Mount Prosper are really suffering. Bad roads, agriculture, um, um, the, the irrigation, sport, sporting facilities. So the question is, we wonder whether it's because the Mount Prosper people, you know, they are exercising their democratic rights when the election time comes, that the government is penalizing them. Mr. Charles says the committee of Wharton Waven is also faced with a situation where roads are in dire need of repair. He went on to say that since this is an area frequented by Dominicans and tourists alike for its sulfur springs, it is very important that these roads are repaired so it will not affect the tourism industry. It would appear that this government, they react when people protest, as was done in Sofria, no matter what the Prime Minister says. The government is a servant of the people, elected to serve the people. And we seem as though the only time they listen and take action is when the people take action. So I am saying that I'm asking whether the government is waiting on the people of Waterloo, waiting on the people of Mount Prosper to take action to ensure their well being, better roads, um, irrigation, sporting facilities whether they're waiting for the people to take action so that they can listen and, and they can really resolve the problem of the people. Mr. Charles also stated that in a democratic country, the government should not wait on its citizens to protest before taking action to ease the concerns of its people. Community service groups and environmental clubs gathered at Portsmouth where they participated in a major cleanup and beautification campaign along the coast of that town. The cleanup began at Secret Bay and stopped at Bellhold Beach, running the full length of Portsmouth. It was organized as part of activities of Tourism Awareness Month by the Discover Dominica Authority in collaboration with the Ministry of Tourism and Cobra Tours. Honorable Ian Douglas highlighted the vital link between a healthy environment and our economy for tourism. It's important that we cherish our environment. Our environment is in fact what we sell in Dominica. When we speak of tourism, our environment plays a big part in our tourism product. And if our country is to continue to grow and to prosper, if the government um, is to continue to provide much needed services like chalk and benches in our schools, if we are to continue to employ policemen to keep Dominica safe and secure, if we are to continue to put medicines in the hospital, it is the revenue, the monies that is generated from tourism that does all those things. Volunteers from service clubs around the island participated in the beautification and beach cleanup that included the Rotary Club, Rotary Club, the Leos and Lions Club, the Convent High School Environment Club, and the Dominican Environment Youth Club. Mayor of Portsmouth, His Worship Clive Senjar, addressing the volunteers, also thanked them for giving up their time and efforts for the beautification of the town of Portsmouth. We have to remember that 
we must keep our environment clean because it speaks about us as a people. You know, and we speak about heritage and culture and how beautiful Dominica is, how beautiful the harbor is. And in order to keep it like that, not just for today, but for tomorrow, we must always clean and maintain. If we do not do that, then in five years' time, when we pass, we will literally have a rubbish dump. And we do not want that. We want children, we want ourselves to be able to come and take pictures and, you know, basically have this for a very long time. Historian Lennox Honeychurch, in a brief overview of the town of Portsmouth, noted that Portsmouth in times of the past, when littering was not prevalent, was so beautiful that it inspired influential writers. Some of us who are older lived in a time in Dominica when there was no plastic. It was just paper bags, and you peeled your dashing, and you peeled your plantain, and everything rotted. Either the chickens took it or the pigs took it and it rotted. So everything was clean. Plastic has changed that. Plastic shoes around the place, plastic bags. And this is one of the main things, plastic bottles, that you all will be cleaning up. And it's because all of this stuff is thrown casually by people. I don't know who they expect is going to come and clean it. People drive along and they fling things out of the window. I don't know who they expect is going to clean it. Is there a garbage fairy that comes at night and spirits it away? No. The volunteers were divided into groups. Some of them took boats across the Secret Bay, while the others worked their way up to Bell Hall. After a day of beautification, the volunteers and the organizers celebrated their success with a social and a barbecue. Our Queen Miss Nadira Lando says that it was breathtaking to have won the Miss Caribbean pageant, although it did not come as a surprise to her. Miss Lando explained that the Dominica Carnival Queen pageant prepared her for a recent competition, therefore she was familiarized with the stage, audience, and the different segments of the show. Miss Lando stated that it was an amazing experience to be competing against other young ladies from the Caribbean and words cannot begin to describe the joy and pleasure that she feels. She mentioned that she will be taking part in another pageant very soon which will be held in St. Vincent. She says that she is very confident and will give her utmost best to make her country proud. Miss Lando says her advice to the young ladies that are interested in taking part in an event such as, this would be stay focused and always believe in yourself. She believes that confidence goes a long way and it is the key factor to make dreams and goals a reality. Single mothers are being urged to be strong and work with their children and talk to them to make them a part of their lives. This message came from the winner of the first ever Mother's Day pageant, Ms. Sherman Valerie. Ms. Valerie says it is very important that single moms speak with their children so that in the end, they are the ones which will have better relationships as their children are growing up. Ms. Valerie is from the village of St. Joseph says she is happy that she was victorious from the competition. I feel great being in the win tonight. After all of the hard work I've put in sleepless nights, well, well deserved, well deserved. And I, I'm so happy, I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed and I would really like to thank all of my sponsors out there. You made this possible and I thank you so much. My friends, my family out there, thank you so, so much because you are the ones who made this possible. The winner said she came into the competition with the intention to win and she worked very hard to ensure that she did. She also said that although she had no prior experience in pageantry, she was the main person who did all of the planning and preparations for her performance in the competition. Miss Valerie said she prayed a lot that her hard work would have not gone in vain. However, she thanked God that her hard work paid off. She added that young mothers like herself who wish to take part in such a pageant must give it their best and feel comfortable. And once they work hard at it, they will be victorious. I've learned to really pay more attention to myself, as a matter of fact, to my nails, my hair. Yes, that was the experience and to be more confident, confident speaking out in public, speaking to people and I've learned to socialize more as well. So you see this Mother's Day pageant have left a positive impact on you? Oh yes, it has. It has. That's really changed my life and I'm really happy that I took part in this pageant. Miss Valerie won Miss Photogenic, Best in Creative and Evening Wear and also Miss Intelligence. 
Miss Amity, best in swimwear and best swimwear, and also best in creative wear went to Miss Tamika Larock. Miss Chanel Cadet won best talent, and Miss Lynn Graham won best evening wear. Miss Tamika Larock secured the second runner up position, while Chanel Cadet was in third runner up position, and Miss Karen Sextius was the first runner up. The crowd was entertained throughout the show as the young ladies put on exciting performances. All the contestants received a participation plaque, a rose, and a bottle of wine. Here are some highlights of the show. This has been the local segment of the news. Coming up next, regional highlights.